Okay, headlock from inside the guard. Um, probably, again, one of my favorite moves. I find this one while just normal rolling in the club, an easy positioning guy. Not everybody wants to headlock you, but I can make people headlock you. And I do that by getting an underhook and just lifting up. And when I lift, I'm lifting with my arm, but also my knees. Lift your knees forward and that pulls me into this position. So it's, a, it's an easy position to create if you want to use it that way. It's also a very practical one for self-defense. Mostly if I'm in a side mount position here and Thomas quickly recovers his guard, now he's still in that position if I haven't locked, let go of his head. If I'm a very tall, long, or strong guy, I might still have his head. So either way, I got his head. I may try to headbutt or bite him so his hand comes in here and he's gonna keep a connection there and a little pinch with his ear to his shoulder so I can't pull my arm out, okay? It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be stuck in there. Other hand is on my shoulder because I might try to punch there. Okay, he's blocking my punch with the forearm. Almost, you know what, actually exactly like you would standing up. That little kind of sloth grip that we have where it's a hook over top of the arm and the forearm's blocking. So he's tight on the head, he's tight on the arm. Less, next thing for me is if I try to squish him, I put my weight onto my elbow and put my weight onto his, show, onto his uh, chin. He gets his hip out, foot comes in and lifts me up to roll me over. And he's gonna land in technical mount. He's gotta get that foot out, yes. Now, from here, there's a bunch of little infos here that we have to be mindful of. The foot is gonna be slightly above the hip, but the knee is opened up as much as Thomas is capable of. So I can't turn my hip, okay? I, my thought is I wanna roll him. If I can roll him, let's get this hand off the floor and that hand off, I might be able to tip him forward. If I can start to get my hip up, I'm gonna be able to roll him forward. So him opening that hip is gonna make things more difficult for me. His hands are on the floor for balance and base. Okay, we're gonna go for an arm bar, but we don't wanna rush it just yet. So he's, he's still fine in this position. And his knee is behind my head. Okay, those are some pretty key details that people miss. They go for the arm bar too fast, so the hands aren't on the floor. The knee is behind my back, so now I can move too easily, and he's not controlling the hip. But by going hip, neck, and base, he's got really good control. Then he just waits for me to struggle for a little bit. And then when I relax, like, okay, I'm just going to stay here for a second. Then his hand comes in the cross face and he pushes my chin as far as he can and lifts his, his neck uh, forward and towards my head. Then he grabs my arm keep, and sit on my hip. Leg comes over my head for an arm bar and he squeezes his knees and Grab my hand. Where's your right hand? There. So you sit up for a little bit so they can see your hand. See this grip? This is very important. Grab my wrist. See how I can turn my hand? That's going to make your arm bar more difficult to finish. By holding the, yes, holding it tight and this hand up tight. Knees are squeezed now. Oh, okay. Now, knees together, hips up slightly, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And there you go. You'll recognize some body mechanics that happen. When he starts to tighten my arm, my hips will come up or sometimes people's legs come up. My leg tends to come up if I'm doing demos uh, or with students. In training, hips start to come up because people want to try and roll a little bit. Okay. It relieves some of the tension. Mistakes to look out for are, well, there's quite a few mistakes as an instructor I see, right? So, one, just making sure that this hand is connected. Sometimes it's there, but not there, so I can pull this out. So pinching with the shoulder up to the ear and the ear to the shoulder, that's gonna help trap that arm there, okay? He's got constant tension in that hand. This arm here, if I go to punch, it's blocking. The forearm's blocking me from coming in, the hand's blocking me from coming out. I like this for sport because if I try to push on his knee to, yeah, to pass his guard, it's difficult, but you don't even have to pull that much, you're just blocking it. So then if I try to stack up, um, it's easier for him to get his foot in, right? Because I'm, I'm gonna try and change my intention to leaning forward. For smaller people, getting this hook in is pretty easy. Can you just, I'm gonna leave my knee on the floor. Can you put your hook in? There, that's a big mistake, okay? Thomas's hips are flat on the floor, so now sweep me over. Even if I lean, sweep me. I'm too heavy on his heel, um, 
in his foot here. This is being compressed to his butt, so, and he's so flat that he's not gonna be able to lift me up. Me being a tall guy, that's not an issue. I can't just wick my foot in, but flexible people can, and they're not strong enough to finish the move. So it's very important in this position, even if my knee is on the floor, he moves his hip out. So he put, yes, and again, you might have to go two or three times because my knee is on the floor. Now, look, his hip is up. So when he lifts, he's lifting on my knee, and it's much easier to roll me, okay? So there's a couple of things that you have to watch out for, and I'm actually going to show uh, with Thomas this angle. Can you go on my guard, please? He's got the headlock, okay? When, and he's trying to squish me. Watch where to keep some weight on this, like, Keep some, I know you're lighter than me. Yeah, there, this. That's how I'm getting my hip out. Now, because Thomas is so light, I can kind of tip him over. Let's get this base a little wider. Yeah, bring that knee, good, okay. Here, I extend this leg to get my hip out, and that's where I can wiggle to get my foot in. If I can't find his leg, another hip, and I'm moving upwards. I'm moving my hip up, not so much sideways, to get that foot in to flick him over. Uh, lastly, as a bad guy reminder, sometimes you, you, I'm 100 pounds heavier than Thomas. I don't want to squish him. So I'm putting my weight on my elbow. But a lot of times what we see is the bad guy doesn't want to uh, squish so much. So you lean back a little bit. And now the elbow's off the floor. And if the elbow's off the floor, the sweep is not going to work. We need the weight forward. So if it was a self-defense situation, that might be a time where Thomas might want to talk and say, hey, calm down, like, please, like, can we just talk about this and stop, start some negotiations? Or we end up, this is one of those ones where you could transition to the emergency escape. If Thomas has this and he's got this and he feels me backing away, that's where the knees come in and he kicks. So you got to keep that in mind. If they're trying to let go, if they're trying to get away from you, you're going to fill that void and kick them away. If they're trying to press in, this is where that sweep will come in very handy. Okay, have fun with it guys.